perspective, Congressman Will Hurd of Texas. Uh, as I said, the only Republican representing any part of the border. You're joining me from San Antonio. Nice to see you, sir. Happy July 4th weekend. Hey, thanks, Chuck. I appreciate you being on. Uh, let me start with what the Inspector General's report mm -hmm. said um, of these border facilities. Serious overcrowding. 31% of children held longer than 72 hours. Adults have been given wet wipes to maintain personal hygiene. Some single adults were held in standing room only conditions. That's just the government and mm. what they've admitted here. As you know, in the New York Times today about Clint, the facility in Clint, Texas, in your district, mm -hmm. here's their description. Outbreaks of scabies, shingles, and chickenpox were spreading among the hundreds of children who were being held in cramped cells, agents said. The stench of the children's dirty clothing was so strong, it spread to the agent's own clothing. The children cried constantly. One girl seemed likely enough to try to kill herself, that the agents made her sleep on a cot in front of them so they could watch her as they were processing new arrivals. Congressman, I know you're not happy with these conditions either, but uh, at this point, do we need to stop this, and how do we stop it? Well, and, and in that New York Times report, that is the agents telling yeah. the, the New York Times reporter, these facilities shouldn't hold anybody for any length of time, let alone children. We should be handling people um, with care and humanity when they are in our custody. But, you know, this, the IG report, which you were talking about that came out, I think it was on July 3rd, yeah. there was also an IG report in May talking about these facilities um, were not prepared for the, the load that they were we're having to deal with and and these are temporary facilities and and unfortunately the, the solution here is we need ice and HHS to have additional resources um, especially when it comes to caring for children HHS is the federal entity designed to handle children a uh, border patrol um, because of the Flores settlement yeah. is supposed to have these children ready to transfer within 72 hours uh, right now they're having them ready within 42 hours but ice and HHS doesn't have the capacity in order to 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 take folks and and it's unfortunate you know when uh, you know many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle voted against an amendment that I put forward about two billion more dollars mm -hmm. um, for HHS to deal with this crisis they voted against that um, I tried to get a hundred more judicial teams because the backlog of these immigration cases we have 900,000 people that are still trying to get through the system we should be able to get an immigration case uh, done within nine months. Um, they voted against judicial uh, okay, increasing but what about the, the, the judges. But isn't the issue here that the Democrats have are, are really not with your amendment, but it's a lack of trust of the Trump administration. They don't, you could make a strong argument that the decision sure. to pull aid from the Central American countries, which I know you're a, you're a, a huge critic of, but sure. to pull that aid to create family separation, that they've made the problem worse and so the lack of trust that they can handle this when you have an administration that clearly is micromanaging things. I mean, how many act, I would sit here and say, do you have confidence in the leadership? Everybody's acting, right? There's Look, no confirmed member anywhere, it seems, in this process. Chuck, that, that's, that's absolutely a problem. The number of acting folks, are they willing to make uh, tough decisions uh, when, when we need to? And so, yes, there, there is a, a lack of trust um, between uh, congressional Democrats and, and the executive branch, but that doesn't change the reality that we're dealing with right now facilities, people that are overwhelmed. Border Patrol is not, they weren't trained in order to handle uh, children like this. They weren't trained for the medical issues that they're seeing. Uh, they were trained to, to be in between our ports of entry right. and, and grab people and apprehend people that are coming into our country illegally. But some of the things that we need to do to fix this, um, I, I've said uh, many times we should nominate and select a special representative for the Northern Triangle, El right. Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras to work with those three countries on the root causes, which is violence, extreme poverty, and lack of economic opportunity in those countries. We should be making sure that OPIC, USAID, and State Department resources, we shouldn't be decreasing resources in them. We should be increasing you're at those odds. resources. You're at odds with the administration here. They seem to have no interest in that. How do you convince and, and, and them? And that's why, does that's, the president that's why reach, I'm pro Does the president reach out to you for advice on this or no? 
Um, uh, he hasn't reached out personally, uh, but I, I, I have many conversations with, with folks throughout the administration. I'm going to continue to articulate the solutions. You know, the other thing that we're not focusing on, not enough people are focusing on, is human smuggling. I, I, you know, I, I spent a, almost a decade as an undercover officer in the CIA. I chased terrorist groups like Al Qaeda, uh, prevented you know intelligence services from stealing our secrets, put nuclear weapon proliferators out of business. These these human smugglers, people that are coming through our southern border, are coming through a human smuggler. Uh, we have their phone numbers. We have license plates of buses that have moved people from Tegucigalpa uh, to El Paso. We need to make sure that countering human smuggling is a national intelligence priority, so that we have the CIA, the NSA, the FBI working with our right. allies in those countries to stop those root causes there. They're the ones that are facilitating these perilous journeys uh, for young women, for kids, and, and, and for these families. And we're not putting nearly enough attention on that in order to dismantle the infrastructure um, that is moving people here uh, illegally. Um, and then also we should be streamlining legal immigration, right? You know, I had a proposal. Yep. It was the only bipartisan um, immigration proposal out there uh, to streamline legal immigration. So people that want to come, you know, we've the United States of America has benefited from the brain drain of every other country for the last couple of decades. Let's continue that and let's benefit from the hardworking drain as well, Let too. Me, but let's do it legally. OK, let me ask you about the census and the Supreme Court decision and then mm -hmm. the president's attempt essentially to to um, go go around the Supreme Court. Um, where are you on the citizenship question? Do you think it should it should should have been added or not? Well, I, I think that the Supreme Court has ruled. I think we can't wait. We need to have, make sure we accurately count everybody. An accurate count is important for cities, for counties. So you are it's, against. It's important it sounds for, like you are against resources. the citizenship question because it could lead to a miscount. Well, we, we, do, we don't want there to be a miscount, for, for sure. Everybody needs to be counted. I'm, I'm also concerned that do they have the, the, is the Census Bureau have the right technical capabilities to protect the information that yeah. is being collected? Um, you know, I used to serve on the committee that oversaw this in the last Congress, and there was problems um, with their cybersecurity defense. Yeah. And, and so we have, we have a lot of uh, uh, broader problems. So let's, the Supreme Court has ruled let's move forward we shouldn't stall uh, the census and we okay. need to make sure that the information we're collecting is protected I want to ask you about somebody who you have voted with a few times uh, mm -hmm. against your own party and that's Justin Amash who is no longer sure. a member of the Republican Party here's what he wrote on Independence Day mm -hmm. declaring his independence the founders envisioned Congress as a deliberative body in which outcomes are discovered we are fast approaching the point, however, where Congress exists as little more than a formality to legitimize outcomes dictated by the president, the Speaker of the House, and the Senate Majority Leader. Number one, is Amash right? And uh, have you thought about leaving the Republican Party? Well, it, it's unfortunate that Justin believes that the party is not big enough uh, for his position and his ideas. I think the Republican Party should be a broad party. I shouldn't be the only African-American Republican in the House of Representatives. You had a pretty colorful uh, quote to the Washington Blade where your advice to Republicans <laughs> was don't be an expletive, don't be a homophobe, <laughs> things like that. Absolutely. Look, uh, we need to make sure the Republican Party is growing. Um, let's look at my state of Texas, Ruby Red, Texas. It's actually purple. Just because we don't have a statewide elected Democrat doesn't mean no. that um, we aren't purple. And I've been telling people if we want to keep a Republican Party in Texas, the Republican Party in Texas needs to start looking like Texas. Okay. And I think this is, you know, that, that goes for the rest of the country as well. Um, but we have an opportunity because I know independents and, and center left Democrats are concerned with the direction of the Democratic Party and we have an opportunity to 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 intrigue those folks that are interested in solving problems in the future by empowering people and, right. and not governments well heard Republican uh, from Texas as I said the only Republican that represents uh, a district on the border thanks for coming on and sharing your view sir much appreciated. of course Chuck take care hey, NBC News fans thanks for checking out our YouTube channel subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.